Today, there is a possibility that the concrete problem affecting English schools will get out of hand and spread to hospitals, courts, police stations, and prisons, just days before classes resume next week. More than 100 schools and institutions have been ordered to close structures made of a concrete type that is prone to collapsing. By 2030, the government has promised to rehabilitate the seven hospitals that Rock has most severely damaged. From the 1950s to the mid-1990s, Rock was employed in public buildings, but it is currently thought to be in danger of collapsing. While more than 250 NHS buildings may have been constructed using Rock in Scotland, where an eight-month inquiry is being conducted to determine the scope of the problem, Rock planks are believed to be present in 34 hospital structures in England. After Rock was found during renovations last month, Harrow Crown Court in northwest London was closed for the foreseeable future. Additionally, the Ministry of Justice is looking into whether any prisons were constructed using Rock after discovering the substance in six courthouse buildings. Hundreds of barracks and training facilities have been examined by the Ministry of Defence in the meantime. Less than a week before the new semester begins, Parents are outraged after learning that their children's schools will be closed because of real worries. After being placed in a difficult position by the government's last-minute declaration that 104 schools must close because they have rack, families became frustrated. Just as students were getting ready to return after the summer break, the Department for Education instructed schools and institutions to partially or completely close their facilities. There are also worries that hundreds of additional schools may receive orders to close their classrooms immediately because they have been fitted with concrete. On Monday, thousands of students will return to COVID-style online lectures, and ministers acknowledge that they do not yet know how many schools will need to close entirely. Schools Minister Nick Jip responded to a question on BBC Breakfast about if other public structures would be impacted by rock by saying, Right across the public sector, we are surveying the estate. You've heard that a court in Harrow is closing. Naturally, we're also acting in the hospital sector. Hospitals are enormously huge structures with teams of highly skilled maintenance personnel constantly on duty. We are renovating seven hospitals because of major rock in those facilities, and they employ propping where they can be seen. Today, Schools all around the nation were compelled to make impromptu plans after learning that their premises might not be secure. However, if rock is left in place, the issue could be even worse, putting industries, offices, courthouses and hospitals at risk of sudden and catastrophic collapse. According to experts, according to Matt Byatt, president of the Institution of Structural Engineers, Rock may be present in inner high-rise structures with flat roofs built between the late 1960s and early 1990s. In 2018, expert organizations alerted government agencies of the materials risks, he claimed, adding that everyone was aware of the issue. Rock has been found in schools, Mr. Byatt added. There was a huge thing about it in hospitals, and a courthouse was shut down last week. They have outlived their usefulness. The problem was brought up by structural engineers many years ago. Building owners and estate managers are in charge of making sure their structures are secure. Everyone, including all government ministries, was aware that the material was available. Fortunately, it is being handled right now. You cannot wait until someone is harmed before making such choices. Units could fail suddenly and catastrophically. Collaborative reporting for safer structures encouraged its members to investigate urgently to see if their buildings had the substance in a report that was issued in April 2020. The research claimed that while rock was mainly used in offices and schools, it had also been discovered in a broad range of other facilities in both the public and private sectors. It claimed that issues with the safety of rock roof planks had been brought up as early as the 1990s and the beginning of the 2000s. The report stated that while the problem may be more serious than previously thought and that many building owners are unaware that it is present in their property, recent experience 
which includes two roof failures with little or no warning, suggests the problem may be more serious than previously appreciated. The scope of the issue is much more than schools. According to Professor Chris Goodyear of Loughborough University's Department of Building Engineering and Materials, it also includes a sizable portion of the nation's building stock. This comprises a lot of the business sector as well as the departments of health, defence and justice as well as local and national governments. The majority of towns in the nation have ageing factories and offices, some of which will have rock. From the middle of the 1950s until the 1990s, rock, a lightweight material, was utilised in the building of walls, floors, roofs and cladding in the UK. Mr. Byatt claimed that calling it concrete is misleading because it is far lighter than what the term permits. According to him, it should be thought of as a bubbly, breeze block sort of material that, when wet, behaves like a sponge to absorb moisture. According to Mr. Byatt, the added weight mixed with the fact that rock roof planks have a propensity to dip or droop over time renders them vulnerable to rapid collapse. Although it wasn't designed to support big weights, it was initially employed since it was affordable, lightweight, and ideal for insulation. The issue is that a significant portion of them have unreinforced rock that is bearing the entire weight because the steel reinforcements did not extend to the end of the planks. A health official added that all NHS trusts should have access to the money they need to replace hazardous concrete as soon as possible. In a report earlier this year, NHS providers urged bringing England's long-neglected NHS estate into the 21st century. Additionally, it stated that rock poses a significant and unjustifiable safety risk. The government declared that it remains committed to getting rid of rock from the NHS estate by 2035. The body welcomed recent government action. According to Sir Julian Hartley, chief executive of NHS providers, but he also called for all trusts to have access to funds so they can replace rock as needed. We applauded the government's recent initiative to replace deteriorating, hazardous concrete blocks in walls and ceilings by requiring that the seven trusts with the highest rock risk be replaced by 2030. The official continued, the government has pledged that by 2035, all rock risks will be eliminated from the NHS estate. However, it is crucial that all trusts have access to the capital funding required to quickly replace these concrete planks. Hospitals are safe, according to schools minister Nick Jibb, who responded to the BBC's inquiry. Hospitals are enormous structures. In some hospitals, there are sizable and knowledgeable maintenance crews. They have the ability to utilise propping, and they are doing so to transport patients from one ward to the next. Compared to the school estate, it is a totally different estate. In 2020, the government announced the new hospitals program, promising to construct 14 new hospitals by 2030. According to a report released by the public spending watchdog in July, the strategy is on track to fail a crucial pledge. The National Audit Office, NAO, discovered that project delays make it unlikely that the goal will be reached. According to the watchdog's findings, 32 hospitals in England that the government first classified as new are scheduled to be finished in 2030. Trusts that missed out on additional capital funding following the recent new hospital programme announcement still need significant investment to renovate ageing estates, as well as to address other infrastructure risks that can jeopardise patient and staff safety, Sir Julian concluded. A spokeswoman for the Department of Health and Social Care stated that the NHS will maintain its current approach to managing risks. The NHS has a mitigation plan in place for hospital buildings with confirmed rock, supported by significant additional funding of £698 million from 2021 to 2025, for trusts to put in place the necessary remediation and fail-safe measures said a spokesperson for the organisation. We are still committed to completely eliminating rock from the NHS estate by 2035. Additionally, we have stated that through our new hospital programme, 
the seven most impacted NHS hospitals will be replaced by 2030. According to the NHS's technical opinion, the present strategy for monitoring and mitigating risk is still suitable. One of the people impacted by the school situation is a parent by the name of Phil. His two children were scheduled to return to their Essex Primary School the next week. His children would initially have to learn online after it was revealed yesterday that its premises were impacted. Just frustration as to why it's been done three days before the school term. Phil said on BBC Radio 4S The World Tonight. A story from back in June has you wondering why. We've been on vacation for six weeks. Why couldn't the plans have been implemented earlier? Actually, three days before the beginning of the new term is not good enough. Richard Kemp, whose children attend Winter Gardens Academy in Canby Island, Essex, expressed concern that they had been residing in the structure for five years during a time when it would have been dangerous. He told ITN that he was quite frustrated. We want to keep our kids safe. But I've been quite frustrated that we only learned about this tonight literally days before the kids return to school. We want to keep our kids safe. But the notice period seems absurdly brief. We were not aware that this information was public. So it is a serious worry. Therefore, the fact that my children attended a school that had the potential to be quite deadly for five years is really concerning. Ferry Hill School in County Durham is one of the other schools impacted. Father of six, Kenneth Hope claimed his 11-year-old daughter was scheduled to start senior school next Tuesday. It will now not open until September 11 as Mr. Hope was informed yesterday. My daughter simply wants to get there. She's been a little nervous about starting secondary school, he said, adding that it had put his family in a tough position. Two schools in the Bradford area have been forced to close. An apparent outside Cross Flats primary school in neighbouring Bingley claimed that her son, who is ready to enter year five, will now take classes in the nursery due to the presence of rock in his classroom. Our head's great and on top of everything, so they already have everything in place. She told BBC News, since it's so near to the start of the school year, it will undoubtedly be disruptive, but we can find ways to accommodate the kids. But don't these things happen? Sometimes, if the school were to collapse around my child, I would prefer that they were not there. Another parent who received word of the entire closure of St. Andrew's Junior School in Hatfield, Peveril, Essex, Yesterday described Herson's confusion and disappointment after learning of the school's closure due to an unsafe roof structure. The parent, who wished to remain unnamed, said, We don't blame the school for this problem, but they haven't made any alternative plans to utilize any other building in the neighborhood. They have ordered some porter cabin style temporary classrooms, which could show up by the middle of September. My son was meant to start at his new school on Tuesday, but because there is no set date for face-to-face -face instruction, we will instead use Google Classroom for the foreseeable future. The DfE and local council allegedly notified the school that it will be forced to close on August 29 at 4 p.m. Our son is confused and dissatisfied, and we are quite frustrated due to concerns that reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete, rock, a building material used from the 1950s to the mid-1990s could abruptly collapse. 104 schools and institutions have been instructed to partially or completely shut off buildings. But in a series of interviews this morning, Education Minister Nick Jibb acknowledged that not all of them have yet received calls from the government. He revealed that some other schools have not yet responded to questionnaires about the presence of rock. Thus the total may increase. We don't know yet. We're talking to the schools, Mr. Jib responded when asked how many schools would need to entirely shut down. In most cases, it will be just a few buildings, or a few rooms, or perhaps just a cupboard, he added. But occasionally, it will affect entire schools. As new evidence surfaced over the summer, indicating that rock previously deemed to be an acceptable condition would suddenly fail, Mr. Jib also refuted the claim that the government erred by waiting until the eve of the autumn term to alert families. 
despite there being no indication that it posed a critical risk. He told BBC Radio 4 as Today Show that a beam collapsed. Despite the uncertainty around which schools are impacted, Mr. Jib said parents should be reassured that their children are protected. He argued that he would be content to have his own nieces and nephews seated in a classroom with a steel post supporting the roof. It has been determined that rock, a lightweight building material that was employed from the 1950s until the mid-1990s, is now at risk of collapsing. Since late 2018, the Department for Education, DfE, has been considering rock as a potential problem. According to Mr. Jib, surveys and the gathering of evidence have been ongoing since 2022, and the National Audit Office, NAL's report released in June revealed issues. However, according to the Times, the first alerts regarding rock roof breaking appeared as early as 1995. Unions and parents were incensed by the timing of the decision to offer instructions just days before the start of the semester. But the school's minister argued that no sooner decisions could not have been made. In response to specific safety concerns, one parent, Shazad Ismail, expressed his devastation over the closure of his son's school in Bingley, West Yorkshire, because it will have a significant impact on a large number of kids. Even the head teacher who wrote the letter was clearly emotionally exhausted, he told BBC News. As a result of being informed only yesterday of the complete closure of S.D. Andrews Junior School in Hatfield, Peveril, Chelmsford, Essex, due to an unsafe roof structure, another parent told Mail Line that her son was confused and disappointed. The parent, who wished to remain unnamed, said, We don't blame the school for this problem but they haven't made any alternative plans to utilise any other building in the neighbourhood. They have ordered some porter cabin style temporary classrooms, which could show up by the middle of September. My son was meant to start at his new school on Tuesday, but because there is no set date for face-to-face -face instruction, we will instead use Google Classroom for the foreseeable future. The D of E and local government allegedly notified the school that it will be compelled to close on August 29 at 4 p.m. Our son is confused and disappointed, and we are very frustrated. The 104 educational facilities that have been ordered to close their doors have been kept a secret by the government, and critics have warned that the problems with reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete, rock, may extend far further. The government has contacted the vast majority of those institutions, according to Mr. Jib, but not all of them. We have been calling them since yesterday, and the majority have. However, we are phoning a couple more today. Additionally, he disclosed that not all institutions had responded to questionnaires, indicating that there may be more people at danger. There will be further surveys, he continued, the vast majority of which have already been returned. According to Mr. Jib, if schools need to bring in porta parties, funds will be provided by the government. We'll cover that. We've been very clear that we'll pay for all capital expenses, he said. Therefore, we will pay for all of those expenses if, in the worst case scenario, we need to find alternate housing in Porta Cabins on the school grounds. There have therefore been some rumours that we won't pay for those expenses. Without a doubt, we'll. Mr. Jib responded. The vast majority have, when asked if all schools affected had now received notification. We called them yesterday. But there are a few more today because those schools are now informing parents about upcoming events at their campuses. A list of the schools will be made public in due course, according to Mr. Jib. On BBC Breakfast, when asked if other public structures would also be impacted by the rock problem, Mr. Jib responded, Right across the public sector, we are surveying the estate. You've heard that a court in Harrow is closing. Naturally, we're also acting in the hospital sector. Hospitals are enormously huge structures with teams of highly skilled maintenance personnel constantly on duty. We are renovating seven hospitals because of major rock in those facilities, and they employ propping where they can be seen. 
Thousands of students experienced a disrupted start to the school year. And Preeti Patel told the I newspaper that the situation is turning into quite a big mess. Ministers have been encouraged to come clean about the scope of the issue. The 11-year-old daughter of Kenneth Hope was scheduled to start secondary school at County Durham's Ferry Hill School on Tuesday. But the family received an email telling them the school wouldn't open until September 11. Six-child father Kenneth claimed that the short notice had put his family in a difficult position. He told the BBC that his daughter was anxious to start secondary school and just wanted to get there. Fiona, a parent, told the BBC that although her son Seamus was due to enter the fifth grade at Bingley, he would now need to attend classes in the school's on-site nursery. She claimed, our head is brilliant and on top of everything, so they have plans already in place. Although we'll find a way to accommodate the kids, it is somewhat alarming that it will happen so soon after the start of the new school year. But don't these things happen? Sometimes, if the school were to collapse around my child, I would prefer that they were not there. The UK's structural integrity of buildings, including those outside of schools, has, according to the Minister of Education, been the subject of new information. According to Mr. Jib, who spoke to GB News, the government is acting immediately because it is moving more quickly than other nations. The decision was made now, he explained, because over the summer, evidence regarding structures in our country and in other countries, not just schools, were reinforced autoclave derated concrete that was thought to be non-critical, actually turned out to fail, emerged. Due to the fact that the safety of the students and employees at our schools is of the utmost concern, we made a very strict decision during the summer, consulted with specialists, and used a cautious approach to ensure. Therefore, we decided to amend the previous policy, which called for taking buildings out of use if the rock was deemed to be in a critical state. As of yesterday, any rock found in schools would now result in such buildings being put out of use. Additionally, we are assisting the 156 schools where this is a problem in finding alternate housing for kids. The safety of the students and faculty at those schools is our top priority. He continued, I know parents and kids will be frustrated by this, but he argued that it was not possible to close the buildings at risk earlier. We made the choice as soon as the information became available. Unlike other administrations throughout the world, we were actively looking for that proof. We take this issue very seriously. And as new evidence came in, we talked to experts about it. We calculated the repercussions for the schools. This occurred during the summer. It might have occurred in November of this year. It might have happened during a class period. Simply by coincidence, that occurred this summer. According to Education Secretary Gillian Keegan, most parents should not be concerned about this at all. Bridget Phillipson, the Shadow Education Secretary, countered that. We haven't seen the full list of schools affected. Ministers should be honest with parents and outline the entire scope of the difficulty we're facing because we don't know where they are. Schools, school nurseries, and universities have been given official guidelines, and they have been informed that they must pay for their own emergency housing. The DfE reported that 104 additional schools were contacted after fresh cases were examined, and 52 out of 156 educational facilities that contain concrete have already taken precautions this year. According to the department, a minority will have to either fully or partially relocate to alternate housing while safety precautions are put in place. However, it advised schools that financing would only be given for capital-funded projects and that they would be responsible for covering the costs of renting emergency or temporary housing. For the first few weeks, it was advised to find space in adjacent schools, community centers, or empty local office building while the structures were being stabilized with structural supports. Schools were advised that switching to remote learning in the form of the epidemic should only be done as a last resort and for a brief period. Ms. Philipson demanded that all impacted schools be identified and stated on BBC Newsnight.
I expect ministers to publish that data next week in the House of Commons and notify parents and tell the public exactly where the difficulties are. It has been determined that rock, a lightweight building material that was employed from the 1950s until the mid-1990s, is now at risk of collapsing. Although the DfE has been thinking about rock as a potential problem since late 2018, unions are upset with the timing of the decision to release guidance so close to the start of the semester. Daniel Kebbard, General Secretary of the National Education Union, stated that it is absolutely disgraceful and a sign of gross government incompetence that 104 schools are learning that part or all of their buildings are hazardous and cannot be utilised just a few days before the start of the new academic year. To further add insult to injury, the government states in its guidance that it will not be footing the bill for additional transport or emergency temporary housing costs. Within a few weeks, Surveys of more schools suspected of housing rock will be conducted. If rock is approved, the DfE has pledged to take appropriate rapid action, which may entail paying to eliminate any immediate concerns and, when necessary, providing for the construction of temporary structures. Parents, students and employees will be relieved that the matter is now being treated seriously. According to Mike Short, the education department head for the Unison Union. However, waiting until the last minute as schools get ready for a new semester will upset thousands of families. Additionally, this might only be the top of the iceberg. The National Audit Office, NAO, a government spending watchdog, highlighted issues with rock and the condition of England's school buildings in a report in June. According to the NAO assessment, 700,000 students attended schools that needed extensive reconstruction or renovation. The timing of this, according to Paul Whiteman, General Secretary of the Not Union for School Leaders, couldn't be worse. What we are witnessing, he continued, are the very real effects of a decade of drastic cuts to funding for school infrastructure. The announcement, according to the General Secretary of the Teaching Union, Nassot, revealed more than a decade of willful underinvestment in schools. Although we appreciate that the DfE has finally acted to protect students and teachers, DR, Patrick Roach stated that it would appear that mere luck rather than judgment has prevented a major disaster from occurring. The Education Secretary stressed that taking a careful approach is best for both staff and students. Nothing is more crucial than ensuring the safety of students and faculty at schools and colleges. Which is why, before the start of the semester, we are acting on fresh information regarding ROC. The plan we have outlined will minimise the impact on student learning and give schools the right funding and support they need to put mitigations in place to deal with ROC, the government claims.